All right, real turkey section coming up. Here we go. Oh, I'm gonna go outside this log. Been here on my back for about eight hours now, so we're just waiting on some scans to come back. See if there's any little issues in my brain or in my neck. And then, uh, uh, what actually happened? I had a mountain bike crash on Thursday, hit a tree with my head, split my helmet. I didn't worry about it for two days. This morning, being Saturday, I woke up and actually passed out. Um, woke up on the floor in the lounge room, so come to hospital, rang an ambulance. Came to hospital to check if I've got any head injury or spinal injuries. I've got a lot of neck pain. You know, as a motorcycle this. rider, this is a nightmare looking at fluoro yeah. light fittings. Yeah. I'll just move this bed out. And then... I just had CAT scans on my neck and on my head, see so if there's any issues with my brain and some lung x rays as well. So we're just waiting for results now. So, see what happens. Update, neck is clear, so I have no spinal injury. Next we're waiting on some possible nasal fractures and just making sure brain scans apparently have all come back clear, so just waiting on final reports to come through. Hey everyone, welcome back. I am back home and I'm doing okay. So thank you to everyone who reached out and offered your uh, support to me. That was fantastic and greatly appreciated. So uh, this is gonna bring me to do a little chat here on protecting ourselves and protecting our heads in particular. So as a lot of people you uh, may know, I'm a motorcycle racer and I've raced motocross and off-road racing uh, for most of my life. So what's really funny is I look after myself with motocross. I wear the boots, knee protection, always the best helmet. With my other sports, because I'm not, I don't feel I'm putting that much energy into it, I sort of back it down a little bit. So adventure biking, you know, I'm pretty casual with what I wear there. And mountain biking, mate, I'm wearing boardies, a t-shirt, and a you know $100 mountain bike helmet. So my accident the other day has made me reevaluate where I'm at with head protection. And I hope this, resonates with a few riders out there and um, makes you perhaps just consider your next option when you're buying a helmet or what you're wearing now and maybe just reconsider what you're up to. So pretty much while I'm talking, I'm gonna throw some uh, photos on here. Uh, I came back to bike riding 2015. A good mate of mine, Greg, Greg Smith, um, got in touch with me and he's, I asked him about helmets. I said, what's the best helmet to buy? You know, I was thinking of Bell Moto 9, uh, which is pretty much, or, or a Shaoi or an Arai. He said, mate, look at these 6D helmets. So I had never heard of 6D helmets. I looked them up online, read about them, looked at all the tests, how they test these helmets. I went, that's me, I'm gonna buy one of these helmets. So I went out, bought the helmet. It's literally been my helmet of choice for 10 years now. It's been 10 years I've been back motorcycle riding. In that 10 years, I did try an Alpine Star M8 for a little while with MIPS protection, and I had a Bell Moto 9 with MIPS protection as well. But I have gone back to the 6D helmet. So over 10 years, nine years of that, I've been wearing a 6D helmet. And reason why, I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can go and have a look at these helmets. I'm not endorsed in any way uh, with these helmets. I actually go out and buy, buy them myself with my own money. But what I like about 6D helmets are, they have a thing called ODS, omnidirectional suspension. And what it is, the helmet has actually two layers, okay? And in between those two layers are these little polymer um, rubber-based 
shock absorbers. So you've got movement in all directions to, they call it 6D, 6 degrees is apparently um, where that name has come from. So it's 6 degrees of movement in, out, sideways, wherever you go. So what there's been studies on is what they call um, like rotational force on the skull. So helmets are normally tested look like with a pin drop, they drop something on the helmet and go bang. But the reality is you always hit the head and your head rotates. And that rotational force is what's been causing the concussions. And there's been a lot of talk about this in the last couple of years. So MIPS is a result of this. So MIPS is in a lot of helmets now and it is a sheath and it allows the helmet to move. So the lining of the helmet and the outer part of the helmet moves. Okay, but there is no lateral movement. It's only purely fore, aft, sideways, etc. So that's where 6D stands out above MIPS in my opinion. So this is, this is my opinion, and uh, but go do your own research. So I'll show you my current helmet. You'll also see it in the photos. So this is the 6D ATR2. This is their second generation of their motocross helmet. Okay, super comfortable. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier. I, the Alpine Star M8 I wore was a little bit lighter than this, but the protection in this, I have gone back to this helmet because I believe in this technology. So you can probably see here the two layers. So in between there is this these ODS suspension system. So literally you have a helmet inside a helmet and in between those two barriers is this um, suspension system. So that is the helmet I wear for motocross. And you know what? I'm wearing this adventure bike riding now as well. I'm not gonna compromise after perhaps a mere um, you know, spinal or a fatality or a brain injury the other day, may, I'm not going to compromise on the helmet anymore. So I have just bought this helmet. Uh, a few of you might have seen me wear this. I bought this based on fashion because I liked the look of the helmet, had all the features, the drop down visor, the sun visor inside, etc. But it has no MIPS, no MIPS system. And it is pretty much just a helmet with your, you know, Esky foam style, um, foam lining inside. So I've only worn this helmet twice. It's going to be on Marketplace if someone wants it, get in touch with me. It's an XL. Uh, I'll be selling that online and won't be using it again. Now, my wife's helmet, uh, I didn't compromise with her at the time. I wasn't aware of any um, off-road style, sorry, a road-based style 6D helmet. So I bought her a Bell Moto 9. Okay. And this is uh, with the MIPS system system in it so it has the inner lining that moves did have a helmet peak we took that off because we found as a pill unit was hitting me in the back of the head so we took that off so th this was the helmet i was going to go and buy i was going to go and buy a bell moto 9 um for myself but i found out that 6d actually also make a road helmet so thousand buck helmet i'm going to go and buy one. Oh, by the way the atr2 is about a thousand dollar helmet so I'm going to go and buy a 6D uh, road helmet until I believe they're developing a adventure bike helmet. So when that's available, I'll, I'll be buying that helmet. But from now till then, until I can afford to buy the road helmet, I'll just wear goggles with my motocross helmet when I'm adventure bike riding. I'm not a big fan of that combination, but I'm going to go head protection over discomfort with um, just wearing goggles. So hopefully 6D drop an announcement that there's an adventure bike helmet coming sooner than later. Now, what am I going to do with mountain bike riding? This is the thing. So my accident happened on Thursday. I was fine Friday. I went to the motocross track, watched a mate ride. It was Saturday that I collapsed and Saturday that I passed out and Saturday that the shit hit the fan. My pulse dropped down to below 40. I was cold and clammy, but I was sweating. Um, so I called the ambulance on myself. I, uh, I asked Diana to call an ambulance for me because I knew I was in something um, bad and sinister was going on. So the story is briefly in the start of this video. I was in hospital for 17 hours getting all scans. We, they in injected dye into my body to uh, see if there's any leaks, uh, blood leaks around my spine and brain, etc. So was given the all clearance. I've got about a three or four week recovery period till I'll be bike riding again. But interesting, accident happened Thursday, Friday, I did some research and found out that 6D, I wasn't aware of these, they actually make a mountain bike helmet. So Saturday morning, I was gonna go and buy a 6D mountain bike helmet, but I ended up in hospital. So these helmets also have the omnidirectional suspension system in them. So they have two layers 
literally a helmet with inside a helmet. Let me get this in here and I'm going to try and move this. You should be able to see, hopefully you can see that moving there. So it's pretty much a helmet within a helmet surrounded by these little polymer suspension components that allow the helmet to move all directions. So if you're wearing the helmet and you cop a blow to the side, the helmet is actually going to move slightly and help absorb that, that shock. And the research on it is, is phenomenal. So go and check their websites out. Uh, that helmet there is about a $350 helmet retail. Um, so I've gone and got the helmet. I, I, I'm that much of a believer in this technology. I really hope this video helps some of you guys. Um, I'm gonna be healthy. Thank you again for the outreach of support. I really do appreciate it. I think I got back to everybody. Um, it really makes you reconsider what you're doing. Uh, one thing I will say as well about the mountain bike helmets, mountain biking has evolved. So average speed on an e-bike is 50% higher than general mountain biking. So I'm still wearing a traditional mountain bike helmet. Now they're actually e-bike rating mountain bike helmets. So I wasn't aware of that until Friday when I started doing some research on it. So mate, protect your head boys. Don't buy a helmet based on fashion. I'm guilty of that. I've done it in the past, but um, look, my little hit the other day, I had a friend die six years ago or seven years ago, mountain biking accident, went over the handlebars. Uh, a buddy of mine that works for Alpine Star told me a friend of his passed away last year, hit a tree skiing. These accidents happen and guys, it could be a slap on the ground. It could be clipping a tree while you're out adventure bike riding. It could be landing on the bonnet of a car. You know, your body heals. I've got skin off every part of my body from this uh, little crash the other day. Both knees are skinned and, you know, that, that grows back. But the brain, I could have been left dead on the trail out, out there and my mates would have had to, you know, deal with that while I was out there. So I'm um, not trying to bring everyone down, just trying to give you the reality of, of the sports we do. So motorcycle riding is dangerous. You're spending 20, 30,000 bucks on your bike, spend a thousand bucks on a helmet. Links are in the description below. If you like what I'm doing, please support our channel. Jump on and subscribe. Uh, yeah, guys, catch you all soon and I'll, I'll keep some videos rolling till I'm back on the bike again. I will add here, um, I have had several concussions through my racing career. Uh, 1988, Sydney Entertainment Centre. I got shit whipped, bike hit me in the back of the head, knocked me out cold for half an hour. That was probably a three month recovery. 2004, I had a head-on on a motocross track at Tivoli Raceway here in Queensland. Again, I was knocked out. I came to literally in the back of an ambulance. Um, that was a, a big hit. Um, and, you know, that was probably a three or four month recovery till I rode again. So, you know, these concussions can sneak up on you anytime. So I'm, I'm quite an adequate rider and I've had these big hits to the head and guys die from big hits to the head. So guys, look after yourself and um, yeah, put something good on top of your head. Cheers, boys.